Hi, this is Dee with University of San Diego Career, Career Development Center. Welcome to Alumni Zoom Trips, a series of pre-recorded interviews with USD alumni experts on how to navigate the long-term impact of COVID-19 on our communities and workplaces. This program is co-hosted with the Office of Alumni Relations. Joining me today is Francis Tapedino. Frank's educational background includes degrees in engineering, industrial management, in addition to a JD in law from University of San Diego. His industry experience includes very senior management positions for the Lockheed Corporation, General Dynamics, General Atomics, Boeing, and National Steel and Shipbuilding. He's also served as house counsel for FMC Corporation. He remains as president of the Candor Group, a nationwide management training organization, which is founded in 1983. He was the chairman of planning commission for the city of Tigard in Oregon and past member of Tierra Santa Community Council. He's currently serving as an active board member with the USC School of Law alumni. Frank has also served as an officer for the US Navy and the US Merchant Marine. Um, Frank, it's wonderful to have you with us this morning. What a remarkable career background. How are you? Very well. A pleasure to be here. Yes. Um, so given that um, the COVID-19 has changed our lives in so many unexpected ways, how do you assess the impact of the virus um, on the economy and our workplaces? And what would you say are the short-term and long-term implications from the outbreak? Yes, very good question. I, had, I think it has had a substantial and immediate impact on the economy of the country, and evidently thousands upon thousands of people have been affected and lost their jobs as a re, re, in relation to that, and that's just a terrible event. Mm -hmm. um, and what would your um, advice be to our students and our alumni in career transition who are navigating the, um, this uncertain job search market um, given the coronavirus outbreak? Oh, that's another good question. What I might suggest is that the students and the recent graduates do not become uh, outmoded in, in their education or their talents. For example, I liken it to be uh, maybe a, a wing designer on a B-24 bomber. I mean, the bombers are long gone. And so I think the students and the recent graduates have to be aware of that and make sure they have the, the educational and technical skills that would allow them to make easy transitions from career track to career track. And that's what I see happening, particularly in industry, as industries react to this virus and the pressures of the market they're looking for people that they could transition from one type of position to another without a lot of difficulty. And if a, a recent graduate is focused so specifically in a particular area, I think that poses some difficulty in, in having them be able to transition within industries or within uh, and a particular company. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. So the importance of having um, a variety of skills that you can transfer to different areas, right, is, yeah. is of paramount importance. Yeah. Um, now, there are so many different career pathways that one can pursue in law, right, from becoming a lawyer, professor, or paralegal. Um, what has been influential in your decision? to pursue law and what would what advice would you have for those who are interested in a legal services pathway? That's a wonderful question. Uh, it, uh, I didn't realize what I was supposed to be in life until I was 42 years old. I mm -hmm. had moved from engineering, from management, procurement, contracts, uh, manufacturing, construction, and then late in life decided to go to law school. And mm -hmm. that not to be a lawyer specifically, but to utilize the background I had. As you know, going through life, all your experience and your education and all of that forms bricks on the road to success. And so if you have a multiplicity of bricks, you could be assured somewhere in, in your trod on the path of life, you will find what what you enjoy doing the most. So I went to law school not to be a lawyer in quotes, but mm -hmm. to be an executive 
schooled in the law because mm -hmm. what's happening in major industries today, they are so encumbered by continuous litigation that they need executives that not only are uh, conversant with the business attitudes uh, and the P&L statements, but with the knowledge of what the rules are. For example, uh, look at Wells Fargo. They had tremendously talented people, and yet they made the most basic of errors, uh, in, in basically in my estimation, of mm -hmm. defrauding their own customers. And so somebody should have been there to say, this is great for a P&L statement, but we would be clearly violating the law if we went down this path. And so what I'm finding in talking to my clients, major corporations, they are looking for people, um, particularly those who had experience in science and engineering and math and technology, plus uh, the knowledge of the law. And that's what swung the pendulum my way by combining all those features and, uh, and, and that education. So I would strongly suggest that for any of your graduates uh, to take a look at that. Uh, law school's not for everybody. It's very hard, expensive. Mm -hmm. But at their age, you know, they've got 40 or 60 more years to work. And I think it would be something for them to carefully evaluate. Um, that's that's very um, inspirational. And just to follow up on that note, um, what skills, um, in addition to that expert knowledge, um, what skills have helped you succeed in your um, in your career? And how can one go about acquiring those skills? Yes, the skills I think are a combination of abilities to get together with people, to work with them, uh, even if uh, you don't particularly like them. You just have to pull together. And I think those skills are something that students have to learn, particularly many students that I mentor uh, at USD and USD Law. Uh, they haven't had a lot of exposure to the, as the Supreme Court once said, the, the slings and arrows of life. And you have to have that. You've got to get that experience in order to be successful in, in, in any career. And um, going back to um, the current um, current situation with respect to COVID-19, how do you think, based on your, your sort of um, legal expertise as well, how do you think workplaces will, will change after um, the COVID and how do you think organizations will be forced to adapt to the yes, new situation? I think corporations are going to change oh, with this COVID, this COVID problem. Um, however, I'm an optimist. Uh, mm -hmm. In life, um, we have a lot of wonderful successes, but one has to be prepared for the eventual heavy storms at sea. And I think this situation that we're presently in, involved with is one of the heavy storms at sea. It'll, it'll quiet down, we'll get through this, uh, but it's a good experience, particularly for the younger uh, graduates to understand that this is a mere setback in life, something to be learned, something to be experienced, and, and yet they have to get up and march forward. But I do think corporations are going to adjust uh, in, in reflection and regard to their reaction to, the, to this problem. Um, you mentioned earlier on that you had, um, you know, embarked on your, um, you know, JD very later in life. Um, what would your recommendations and suggestions be to our alumni who are, you know, who are in career transition and who are sort of, you know, later in their life stages and wanting to get back into the workforce? Um, what would be some advice you can share with well, them? Yes, that's a good question. I think... One has to be flexible because there are certain areas of the country that are coming up and starting to get full operational um, positions. Mm -hmm. And so for one who's looking for a position or a change in career, 
I would suggest they not be limited to a geographic area. For example, San Diego, wonderful beaches, great sunshine, mm -hmm. but very limited in terms of employment opportunities. So for somebody who's looking assiduously at their career path, I would suggest that they open up their vista to other areas of the country. Uh, and, and also as far as educational opportunities, this might be an opportunity for those who are temporarily uh, out of the workforce to look at reinforcing their education, to pick up perhaps some degree of expertise in a different area. Uh, and if any of them are interested in law, I'd be happy to speak with them uh, about the opportunities that are opened as soon as you get a JD, the doors, the golden doors of opportunity, at least in my case, opened up uh, completely unannounced and completely unexpected. So that's something they might consider also. That's very helpful. And for someone who doesn't want to be a lawyer, what other career pathways can they pursue with a law degree? Oh, with a law degree. Well, that's what I did. I didn't really want to be a lawyer. And as I mentioned before, corporations are looking for people that are trained in the law for senior executive management positions. And so there's a whole area that opens up, for example, manager of contracts, manager of worldwide procurement, uh, manager of environmental services. All of these areas are open to somebody who is schooled in the law and yet who wants to be in the line of management, decision-making management in corporate America. Thanks so much, Frank. Um, and you mentioned earlier um, the importance of having expert knowledge, importance of emotional intelligence, social skills. Um, what other skills for the future of work um, can, can you think of and how would one, one go about building and developing those skills? Uh, I think, as we already mentioned, if they could be alert to what's happening in the marketplace, if they're interested in the marketplace, mm -hmm. um, what developments are occurring, where is the new push, uh, for example, uh, human resources. We're, we're learning more and more about how corporations should respond to the demands of the current laws vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, employment requirements. Um, a whole host of areas are opening up. And uh, from my experience in working with corporations, they're looking for young people that are willing to work, are willing to learn, are willing to be part of a team, um, uh, have no pre preconceived notions, and yet who are ethically and morally attuned uh, in order to protect the corporation and themselves. I think those are the elements. And uh, somebody with that background um, uh, in, in any of those areas, even in accounting, we, we, we've got to take a hard look at the morals and the ethics of even the CPAs, uh, what they're signing off on, and and, uh, and even in management, construction, and operations, and procurement, a big thing in procurement, ethics and morality, um, too many horror stories of corporations being enmeshed in litigation that is disastrous for the corporation and disastrous for the board of directors when somebody in contracts um, goes uh, goes awry in terms of what they're doing. Okay. If you were to recommend three great reads on any subject, what would they? What, what would that be? Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, I'm. Uh, I have to tell you, I'm a, st uh, a serious student of World War II military history, and so. Mm. When you start talking about great reads, my mind goes back to all of that. Uh, but there is a host of uh, books out there on management, management training, ethics, morality. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one takes a look, for example, uh, at the current uh, issue of books on those subjects. They cannot go wrong. And I think that would be a great preparation for students, particularly new students, new graduates, to take a hard look at what some of the major authors are saying in those areas vis-a-vis -vis the current 
series of problems that corporations, not only here in this country, but international corporations have had. Mm -hmm. Is there um, just, you know, if you were to provide any one title, is there one book that's profoundly affected um, and it affected your life and inspired you? Well, it's hard to say. I think uh, not so much a book. I think the students have to look at their own background. At least mm -hmm. that's what propelled me in life. I came out of a, uh, a, an immigrant, impoverished family out of Brooklyn, New York. And uh, there are angels in life. And one of them I met who saw something perhaps in me, as you perhaps see in, in some of the recent graduates there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he sat down and wrote a check for the first year of my college education. And but for that, I would have probably been uh, driving a cab today in Brooklyn. <laughs> not, not to demean cab drivers, certainly. <laughs> Um, and um, so let's talk a little bit about your USD experience. How has your USD experience and degree prepared you for your career? Oh, wonderful. USD is such a great university. I have nothing but, but the greatest feeling for USD and the professors. Now, Very have, different from Brooklyn. Yes, yes. It was just wonderful. Um, and so, but particularly the law school. I mm -hmm. went to USD to go to the law school. And fortunately for me, they had an evening program, which they still have, mm -hmm. uh, because I was manager of contracts for General Atomic at the time. So it was a pretty heavy duty job. Mm -hmm. But USD allowed me to matriculate into their evening program. And the professors there are so dedicated and the dean uh, is such a wonderful person. And I cannot say enough about that school and the professors and the environment. So if anybody's interested, I'd be happy to talk to them about that school and, and what it could do for them and their careers. Um, what was it, um, if you were to name just one thing about the program um, that has influenced you the most, what would it be? Oh. It's, it's hard to pick out one particular element. I think the combination of courses that we had to take, uh, con law, certainly, and, uh, criminal law, civil procedure, and the professors who make up the, make up the, the, uh, the whole series, uh, it's often the professors that swing the subject and, and influence the students. Uh, it's different than reading a law book in a library versus having a professor that USD has at the law schools that can make the subject come alive and to challenge your mental thought process and stir that and get that going. So, and there are so many professors, I hesitate to name any of them because I'll leave somebody out. Sure. Um, thanks for that, Frank. And on a final note, I know um, that your hobbies include building museum quality sailing ships, which I found, um, you know, very astounding. Um, so for those who share a similar hobby, are there any hobby shops you'd recommend in town? Oh, there are a couple, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I buy most of my uh, kits from, uh, from the major suppliers in France and Germany. Um, and, uh, and there are a few shops in town where you could also procure that. But it's a great hobby. Uh, I have a wonderful wife who puts up with my wacko and uh, my ac uh, ideas and my idiosyncrasies. So she allows me time to go ahead and focus on building, uh, for example, a model ship. It's, it's just grand. Um, well, Frank, thanks so much for this, uh, for this great conversation. Um, it, was, it was an absolute pleasure uh, meeting you today virtually, and I hope to meet you in person one day. We'll do it. We'll Thank do it. Thank you for your time again.